The initial question posed by Zergherd is whether or not the transfuses in this battle save him. I want to talk about that, but I also want to talk about the idea of what goes wrong before this moment. Because let's watch this battle. This is a ticking time clock. Basically, do the Marines die first or do the Broodlords? It's a gamble. It's a risk. It's not worth taking. But yes, the transfuses are what allow you to extend that clock just long enough to get rid of all his anti-air. You also lose all of your queens. But really what it comes down to is the choices you've made in this moment and up to this moment. And that's what I want to take and focus on today in today's Newbies News Day. Guys, hopefully we will get back to a weekly schedule. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but definitely make sure you send in your replays, cheesy shaft at gmail.com. Anyways, Zerg Herd. He is going for what appears to be a rush, almost kind of an all-in, but he's going to play the macro game out of this. One thing I do want to talk about, that Overlord, really, really bad. Why are you wasting so much time there? Clearly, you're afraid of getting proxied or whatever, but you can do that with a drone, man. That Overlord really needs to be going towards your opponent. That's critical. Also, I hate this late gas. I just really don't like this build. And actually, as you'll see, you're floating extra in minerals. You could have gone ahead and taken that gas a lot sooner. Um, there's nothing about this build that really works. Maybe get out of your buildings a little bit earlier. But yeah, it's just it's just kind of a weird situation. Um, as you can see, just just not the best build order there. Um, you, the gas is really late. That means you're not gonna have link speed early on. You're gonna have a lot of troubles with reapers. Really good reaper micro can shut you down. And because you're floating gas, you're not gonna get your tier two quite as early. Uh, and you're going for a fast roach build. He's actually scouting that right now. He sees this as a one base Zerg and he's going to defend. Now let's talk a little bit about how Terran uh, works as a race real quick because Terran don't actually need a whole lot of units to defend a given position. Their units are just naturally good at defending positions because they're glass cannons. If you can't get to the high ground, well, because he's got a wall in and he's got those ranged units, well, it's not like Protoss who their zealots their first unit that pops out it doesn't actually do range damage marines do so that's actually a huge difference as does the reaper by the way you are floating quite a bit of resources at this stage in the game you could do a lot with that i understand you are trying to save a little bit for your rush but notice you have a lot more minerals than you do gas and not really the ability to use it if this is supposed to be ravagers you're going to need even more gas but you're only going to actually send three roaches also, I'd like to point out that these lings are in exactly the wrong spot at all points. You have them kind of going between these two bases right here right now. And they should be on creep until ling speed. And since you're not even getting ling speed until way later in the game, you have to be very careful. These are almost entirely useless lings. So it's something really to start to, to think about there. Um, your queens were pretty late. You could have got those quite a bit sooner. Your third, uh, there, you really, really need a third. Um... And as you can see, he sees the roaches coming. Um, he already knew you were going to be rushing, so he knows exactly how to respond to this. He actually builds that bunker on the wrong side. That forward bunker is the better one, the one on the right-hand side. Um, because, it's as you can see, that's going to be the one you end up attacking. Uh, he only puts a reaper in there, and you just back off. So he's, he's completely defended this. He can salvage it. He doesn't actually lose that much from just bunkering down and defending. And he can, of course, build a command center and just float it down whenever he feels like. So actually denying this expansion is not as good as you want it to be, and it's coming at a very, a very significant cost. You can mitigate some of those costs just by... Uh, paying a little more attention to your minerals and gas and, you know, getting some more drones a hell of a lot quicker. Now, you are starting this attack finally. He's doing the repairs. You're never going to break this without Ravagers. So I just have a hard time understanding, like, why you chose to continue this attack. I do love your Overlord placement, though. That That's really wonderful here. So for the last 20 seconds or so, we actually have not been doing very much with the roaches. They're on that side of the map, we're getting our layer tag, now we're expanding into some extra gases, we're getting spore crawlers, but it all just seems really, really confused. The spore crawlers, of course, are good because roaches aren't that great at going for anti-air, but we're also getting this the very fast spire, so that's not really, really 
matching that. We went for like the early roaches, but we only made three for a rush. And now we're getting all this gas as if we're going for mutilists, but instead you're eventually going to go for corruptors, which shuts down drops and can help you with some sieging, but you don't use the corruptors correctly. And you've already got these spore crawlers in place, so it just seems like not the right move like you don't have enough ground forces and a lot of timing attacks are arriving at like five to six minutes so it just makes me very very skeptical i do like the fact that you're starting to push this creep could be a little bit better though remember to go down that left hand ramp as well you've got this creep you forgot to spread you do tend to leave some tumors behind as you're going you see another one you left behind right there and as the spire is completing, I want to point out that you could actually do the same build without making roaches, which means you're going to have more mutas or anti-air later. You're also going for plus one flying attack, which is definitely a upgrade for mutalisks. Eventually you're going to want broodlords, so you want the broodlords to stay alive longer. That's going to take the form of uh, the carapace upgrades for flying units instead. And this third is actually quite a bit late. I do like the fact that you're finally taking it, but you could have taken this like a minute, two minutes earlier. I've already indicated several points in this video where that could have benefited you. Also, the extra production would help in this battle here. As you can see, you are kind of getting knocked back quite a bit, despite the fact that you're on creep and he's running more and more uh, defensively on, on a creep. Your Ravager control a little bit weak. You pretty much want three to four roaches for every Ravager you have. Try to keep that ratio in mind. He's hitting you with tanks though, so this is definitely very anti-roach, anti-Ravager. So bringing your queens into this uh, to take out the tanks, very good move. Now that the tanks are gone, you've got the Corruptors there. It takes out the Medivac and ends this attack. But since you're doing this very defensive roach corruptor style, I have to wonder at the fast pull why you couldn't have just done that off of a uh, hatch first type of build and then stay on this kind of composition as you're taking your third base and droning it up and then explode into the mid game doing the composition that you already have planned. You're getting the plus one ranged attack for your roaches that's awesome what i'd like to see is you going ahead and getting a um, metabolic boost quite a bit sooner than you do i understand that metabolic boost is not like a crux of your strategy here however just being able to take zamaga towers throwing lings at your opponent to scout for expansions as well as being able to position yourself under the broodlords we'll talk more about that with the lings would be very beneficial now you're attacking into this i like that corruptors however remember they have the ability to use uh to like burn down buildings you should definitely be using that a little bit more i think roach ravager definitely gets out dps by a marine tank army so I love seeing these Ravager shots from you. Now, let's take a look. You're actually doing a pretty good job with your injects, but make sure you're hitting this one, hitting this one, having your queens in the right spots. Sometimes you can actually take and put your queens in spots, like some are just for injects and have them in a hotkey, and then have just your creep slaves in their own hotkey. Also, you should have a fourth base. So you use your Ravager shots, and he didn't rush right into them. So maybe you should fire on his army with one and then like walking it towards you unless he's already chasing you you need to give him a reason to come into that fire So just take a look here real quick. You fire off these shots super early before he's even plunging his tanks down. And the moment you see him start sieging his tanks is when you should drop those Ravager Biles. Notice how late they are and how many tank volleys actually go down. You lost way more ground on me here than you should have. Wait for him to position his tanks. That's the point of Ravagers, not to hit mobile infantry. Also notice during this battle, you're doing a pretty good job hitting your injects, but not this third base. Um, your third base and your, well, the fact that you don't have a fourth means your macro is slipping quite hard. You can see your resources are as well. And you're really br rushing straight to the Broodlords, which I, I get that, but you've got to have an economy behind that and you just don't. You don't have the ability to resupply like you should. So little trades like that are good, but you've got to be careful that you're not oversaturated in your main and other places that you're hitting your injects and that you're still taking your fourth base you definitely need an earlier macro hatch just look at the fact you don't have any gas but you're floating so many minerals you don't even have link speed right now to 
supplement your army. You need to be able to have a unit that's just a mineral dump. And for Zerg, that's speedlings. You need that upgrade and you need it quick. That's why cracklings are actually so good. The creep spread here is good, but you could have definitely started spreading this a lot sooner. You'd have it a lot further out. That's way better for your broodlords, and it's obvious you're going for broodlords here. So, a couple of quick things. Don't morph them out this far on the map, and look at the fact you don't have any gas. You should have definitely got that fourth base a lot sooner, and there's only one gas there, so get the fifth base a lot quicker too. That way you have the gas to keep things balanced. Now, here's another issue. You're morphing out in the open air where anything can get underneath you and that's the issue here this entire army gets underneath your army once they kill the roaches and that's going to be what allows a lot of those brood lords to die this should not have been that hard of a fight you can actually go over on this ledge here to the right but brood lords are a sieging army you have no map control look at the fact you don't have overlords you don't have zelnaga towers you don't have lings parked anywhere and you haven't used ultralisks to help clear out the the like marines and the entire forces that could come under there so in order to clear the map you need to go ultralisks first and then go into the brood lords the brood lords are for breaking bases and again morph them over here on the ledge where it's going to be harder for ranged units like marines to get up underneath them and you're actually going to uh morph like move that way and then morph but you're actually right in the basic run path here of this marine army just pushing out from the third base is going to run right into this and it's it's a basic intercept there's no reason that this battle should have been fought here like just two screens to the right and you would have been fine notice he's getting sieged up everything's in position you're kind of unready for the battle but you respond quickly enough the roaches take a while to kill but you don't actually have armor upgrades for them you have the attack upgrade so they're doing more damage but they're dying faster and that means he can get here up under the brood lords. So you're going to lose all of these brood lords. lings don't have ling speed and they're too late the brood lords are already dead they can't hold anything in position here Now you're getting the plus one melee upgrade, that's great, but notice that you got plus one flying attack, you should have got the carapace there. The melee attack makes it so that the broodlings do more damage every attack after that initial attack where it lands. Um, so that's where you're going to get the extra DPS. The, the broodlord of course gets the, the flying carapace. You're also getting cracklings, that's wonderful, but hopefully you'll start using the lings to dump some of these minerals. So this time you're actually going to have a little bit underneath of the Broodlords, and we'll see what difference this makes. You're still morphing them out in the open, unlike this should not happen, but you got the Lings underneath them this time, and the Broodlords do finish morphing, they're throwing their, their things down, but there's a lot of Marines here, and you're starting to run out of Lings. As you can see, it's all about keeping the Marines away from the Broodlords. The Queens are going to swing in here, though, and they're going to give you just enough longevity on these Broodlords with the Transfuses that you're going to be able to take out all the ants here. But you lose all the ground army, and you lose control from underneath of the Broodlords. Remember, it's always going to be about controlling the space underneath the Broodlords. Sometimes that can be done with Infestors. Sometimes that can be done with lings and banelings. Sometimes that can be done with queens. You really have to adapt to the situation you find yourself in. Ultralisks are ideal for clearing the map, but once you've cleared the map, you have a really hard time sieging with Ultralisks. Broodlords are a siege unit, and you've got it in a siege position. You've even got it over this little cliff edge. You've got some of the morphing. You probably could have those grouped up a little bit better, but you're still parked in the same general area, and now you've got the speedlings kind of in the back where they can get under the Broodlords if necessary. One thing you could be doing is using the Corruptor shots, just one or two, uh, from this far edge um, to, to go ahead and start doing more damage to that planetary. However, there's an army here. You probably want to break that army, kill the medevacs off a little bit quicker. So I get that. However, once you've done that with these corruptors, go use them to siege immediately. Notice that you've got them pretty much just sitting here now. Yeah, at this point, you should be using this to take out the planetary. Your marines, or the, the marines are actually getting underneath your brood lords. You don't quite have enough of a ground army to keep them off. So just remember to continue uh, producing 
speedlings. In order to do that, you're going to need a much better mineral income, which means a lot more bases earlier on. Notice that you're actually not killing this planetary because of the repairs. These corruptors could be doing a lot of damage here. You're finally moving forward with the Lings. Imagine having just a few Banelings in here. You could have done this a whole lot sooner. The Banelings, of course, would have connected with the SCVs. Um, another option is to have some of your Lings back on the um, back side of the map in a defensive posture. Maybe you could have like some Lings and some Banelings up front, but a lot of uh, Lings uh, defensive as well. So again, you're just going to need more mineral income and more production at this stage in the game. I think you kind of get the idea of what we were trying to teach here though, because once you do get into the siege position, you seem to be doing fine. It's a matter of getting the economy to build up to it and then just knowing where to take things on the map. You did a really good job this game, Jay, and I just want to say thanks for sending this in and I look forward to seeing the next thing that you send us, man. Have a great day. Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.